Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new vlog. There is a little bit of snow on the ground today, especially on top of the new table. Hello gorgeous boy, <laughs> hello darling. Oh, it's a beautiful, crisp, wintry day today. It is chilly in here. Oh, feeling so festive when there's bits of snow everywhere. How nice. I must admit, we only got out of bed at half past nine with the jet lag. It's, um, yeah, it's hit us a little bit actually. So yeah, so it's quite a late morning. I need to get up. I just need to get myself ready for the day. Again, another lovely busy day. I hope you guys aren't bored by how much I'm kind of showing you of what I'm doing like work wise, like the different jobs that I'm working on and me getting ready for them. I thought maybe it might be a nice little insight, but actually it might be quite boring for you when I'm like, now I'm doing this and now I'm doing this. So let me know. Just a few little things to do this morning. I need to put a wash on. Bobo, Bobo, do you want your advent calendar? Do you want a treat? Come on. Oh wait, has he had it? No. Oh, Alex has already given him his advent calendar treats. Oh, he's not eating it. Bobo, do you know what your little treat? Bobo treat. Do you want this little treat, Alan? That's your day two treat, isn't it? Oh, you're not bothered. That's not like you. Interesting. <laughs> this is Bo's little advent calendar. Scrumbles. Happy holidays. Holidays. Oh, I get it. <laughs> but darling, why don't you want to eat your little treat? However, my advent calendar this year is extremely wonderful. This is an absolute treat of an advent calendar. This is the Le Chocolat advent calendar by Elaine Ducasse. The team very kindly sent us this over, so I actually haven't even opened number one yet. That's how out of it I was yesterday. <laughs> so me and, Alex, me and Alex can have one each of those later, but they've equally sent a number of other lovely things from, from the team. One of, one of which is this dark chocolate giraffe. Dark 75% chocolate, that's my kind of thing. This little box. The Chocolat Alain Ducasse. This enormous box too, and I haven't even wanted to open this yet because I'm guessing this is an enormous chocolate box, which I was not expecting. Let's experience this together. What is this? Oh my God, do you even get gloves? Do you make your own box? Is that the idea? Look at this. So that's the bottom and this is the top. And then I'm guessing that you put all the little things inside it to make like a little candy box. Wow, what an absolute treat this is. And it smells, smells like heaven. <laughs> my, my mouth is actually salivating at this point. Giraffe milk chocolate candy box. Thank you very much to Alan Cass and his, um, and his team. What a treat. My tree of dreams. I love you. <laughs> The day is just flying by right now. We just had our builders background, the guys who did the garden, who are just amazing. Same guys that we want to do the bathroom, the ensuite bathroom that I've been talking about for ages. Um, they've just been round, so we spent a bit of time with them talking through absolutely everything. So that took up time, then, then I was ravenous, so I needed to have some food, and then I've just been on the phone booking a little hotel stop for my dad and my stepmom. I don't know if you guys, you guys might not remember, but last year I was working on a project with Polestar, these incredible Swedish electric cars. Absolutely amazing. Like, I genuinely am interested in buying one. Like they're that fantastic. At the moment I'm looking into electric cars. Yeah, we went over to Lake District to a place called Lodore or L Lodore, Lodore Falls. And at the time we were there, I was there with my brother and Alex and we had such a lovely trip. And I remember at the time saying, I wish I could bring dad here. So um, I booked my dad and my um, stepmom a little trip in December to go and have like a little spa break weekend. Um, so I've just been on the phone this morning booking in like their restaurants and their spa and all of that, getting all that ready for them. So that's really exciting for them. But it's just like, my day is, is just gone, completely gone at this point. I also need to tell you all about the plans for the spare room which initially was the office. It was like an office room and we didn't end up using it all that much because it's it's quite far away from the front door and if you've got like parcels, just a bit annoying to get to the front door for parcels super quick. 
so we stopped using it as much and yeah it's kind of become like this place that we dump all the crap so we decided to turn that room into a bedroom and make it usable so it means we can have more guests over and that kind of thing that's the idea I need to go show you all the plans for that room. However, before I do that, I thought I would just show you a little foundation makeup routine, seeing as I'm about to do it anyway for the day. This is one that I get asked about a lot, and it's because, let me slide this in here, this is a paid for advertorial with Armani Beauty. Um, I get asked about this a lot because Armani Luminous Silk Foundation is that cult classic favourite foundation and everyone kind of knows about it. A lot of people have either tried it, tested it or haven't and are kind of really wanting to find out more about it. Bobo has found a wrapper. So sorry if you can hear him chewing on a little wrapper behind me. I just want to show you a bit on camera because like I say this is something I get asked about a lot. Like a lot of people want to know what is this foundation for? What kind of events? Could I wear it for my wedding day? Ow! I slammed my knee into the desk. Ow! This was also the makeup that I used for my wedding. So this is also like my wedding, wedding makeup routine. Um, starting off with the Armani Prima moisturiser. This, um, I've been using it a lot recently. I'm beyond obsessed again. I'm a bit scared of it running out because I know how rare these are sometimes to come by. If you can ever get your hands on this moisturiser, I would so recommend picking it up. It smells divine. It's the most gorgeous texture and it's incredible for makeup. I mean, um, Linda, who is the creative makeup director for Armani Beauty, she wanted this to be like the perfect base for makeup and it really is just unreal. Okay, just for extra glow, I'm gonna go into the Fluid Sheer. This is my favorite color. I've used a few of them. This is um, 10, so it's got more of a bronzy, glowy finish. Personally, I prefer using something like this to a primer because I really just love a glow for my makeup. Another tip you could do is that you could mix this with the foundation, like on the back of your hand, for instance, before you apply it, to give yourself an even more glowy finish. That would be amazing. But just to give you an idea really about the Luminous Silk, it's become that classic favorite, especially for weddings or events of that kind because when it's on, it's not gonna move. It's luminous, hence the name Luminous Silk, and it is like silk on the skin, but you're not gonna get that glow, you're not gonna get that greasy, not greasy, you're not gonna get that like dewy glow, which and as much as people love it, it doesn't often equal long wear. So this is like a long wear, luminous finish, medium luminous finish, and buildable foundation um, and that's why it is such a favourite for massive occasions like weddings or events or you know red carpets because you're not going to get any flashback it's not going to SPF in it it's just going to sit wonderful on the skin it's not going to budge so I'm going to go with shade 5.5 I think that's the one I really like when I'm this tanned so let's let me apply a bit onto I mean this is a gorgeous foundation brush it's really really beautiful so I mean again like I said you can make it more buildable and build it up. Um, I mean, an Armani makeup artist would apply this a lot thinner <laughs> than I am, but I'm just, I want to kind of show it in the context of how the normal person, not a makeup artist person, would do their makeup, and that is applying a nice healthy layer of it, and I just want to kind of show you how, like, how I would use it and how it sits on my skin, just to show you a real vibe for it. So, as you can kind of see across here, it looks flawless, like I said, it's medium, medium coverage, but buildable, as I say, and it makes the skin, like, my skin here looks healthy, um, it's not necessarily glowing to the gods, which on most occasions you don't want if you're going to an event or whatnot, you don't want to be too glowy in the cameras, I mean, the point is that it's meant to make your skin look like flawless silk so as you can see there i've got a really gorgeous like healthy complexion it's evened out the skin tone beautiful shade but i don't look caked in makeup it doesn't look extremely heavy it feels really lightweight on the skin like my skin doesn't feel claustrophobic now i'm going to take you into kind of direct light here so you can see let me find a sh shot of light so this is the complexion 
don't mind my hairy face. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully that gives a really good impression of kind of direct sunlight. As you can see, it looks radiant and it looks luminous, as you'd imagine. And this is just in, I mean, it's fairly blue actually outside, but again, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Then the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. This is in shade four. I'm just gonna brighten up and dry a little bit. I'm just gonna dab this in a little bit with the brush to disperse. And then now, now it's kind of dispersed on my face. I'm just gonna use a sponge. Look how like brightening that is under the eyes. I'm just gonna go in with bronzer. This is a Neo Nude Fusion Powder in eight. So it's really quite dark for my skin, but I love it as a kind of blushy, <laughs> as a blushy bronzer. So I'm taking that primarily over the cheeks. I'm not really going up into the hairline. I just want to take it up into the cheeks, around the edges to give that dimension. And over the nose. And then I like to pull it through the crease of my eyes. This colour on me isn't the most natural bronze, but I don't really want that. If I'm doing like a Christmassy look, like the rest of the day, I'm shooting a couple of different things. So I need a more Christmassy festive look today. So that's what I'm going for. And I love the shade. Hey baby dog, what are you doing? Oh, are you doing gorgeous boy? Sometimes I look at this dog and I'm like, how are you the most beautiful thing in the entire world? Dad, you are just so perfect. What have you been chewing? Look how perfect you are. No, that's not yours. That is definitely not yours, okay? These are my thing. You have made such a mess. Ooh, blush. I'm gonna do a bit of blush. This is the Neo Nude. Melting Colour Balm in 45. It's this beautiful, like, orangey tone. I'm obsessed with these Melting Colour Balms. I've mentioned them before, but I'm just absolutely in love with them. I think they're absolutely amazing. Oh. Look at that colour. Oh, I am going for it today. I'm just going to do my lips first. I just put on a really simple liner. And I'm going to go in with the Lip Power 504. Oh, I like it. I didn't want to go, I didn't want to go for a red. I wanted to go for something berry-like. Oh, I love that. And that goes really nicely with the colours. I'm just going to go back into the 45 and just really simply with my, my blush brush, add a bit more of that into like the crease of the eye. I'm literally just winging it into the socket and out of it. Then I'm going to go into shade number 61, which is this beautiful purpley shade. And I'm going to use that kind of where I would put a liner, but then also in this kind of V shape, so into the crease, but also here. And these are, again, super buildable, you can build them up. I don't want this to be like super duper perfect, I want it to just feel a bit more undone. Honestly, I think these Neo Nude eyeshadows are probably one of my favourite launches of the entire year. I'm going to go with the Ice to Kill Stella in five. Again, these I use all the time. Best with your finger. Just get in with your finger. I'm going to add that to the very front portion. And that, it's got a lovely taupey undertone. So it's going to mix beautifully with this purple. So pretty. Just a nice little lick of Eccentrico Mascara. The Eyebrow Maestro in number 12 Sand Blonde. Just to fill in any gaps in. Let's put a little bit of product through the brows. Now just to fill in a little bit. That colour is so good for my brows actually. And that is a full like festive Armani look. And I'm a little bit in love with this. Look at that colour of the lipstick. I feel so like sultry and sexy. I'm just taking that brush again just Making sure that's all nicely blended. One thing I'm not done, I'm not set. Sorry, powder. <laughs> My uh, Luminous Silk Powder in number two. Just under those eyes. To brighten, to set. <laughs> now I'm done. I mean, you could also add a little bit of liner, a bit more like black liner if you wanted to as well, but I quite like that more smoky, undefined look sometimes. And then more structure on the lips. It's kind of a nice, nice contrast. 
but I love it. I'll leave everything I've used down below linked for you guys. Makeup's looking nice. I've actually just been out. I was quickly taking Alex to the doctor. Oh, unexpected. Quickly taking Alex to the doctors. Um, whizzed around a little bit. Sun is now beautifully going down. I need to film a reel. So um, I'm gonna get onto that. I also have some gorgeous new pieces from Tommy Hilfiger. Super cuddly little slippers. And I have this full set. I need to take all the tags out yet because this is like it's a full comfy set from Tommy Hilfiger. It's got this lovely detailing, almost looks like a knitted, oh it is. So knitted red stripe, a knitted like lustrous gold stripe down the side, which goes with a matching, oh this is so nice like a short roll neck jumper. Sorted! I am so comfy cozy in this. This is such a great little like track set for anyone who likes to be, you know, super cozy at home but wants to still look stylish and fashionable. This is so fab. I love the detail. This is really lovely. I mean, it's very Tommy Hilfiger but a lot more kind of stylized up loungewear. And then with the little these are so soft. As soon as I put my feet into them, I was like, oh, hello. And as I was filming, I got a little, I heard a little wee from outside, didn't I? A little wee. And I was like, oh, he's managed to get all the way up the stairs to find me. We do tell him not to come up the stairs. And, and for the most part, he's brilliant. And when we go oh. out, we put the little um, uh, gate across the stairs so we can't go up when we're not in. And he never goes up when we're in. So. He must have just been feeling a little bit lonely because Alex isn't in the house and he's come up to find me so I felt a bit sorry for him. So you got to sit in my video, didn't you? Didn't you? Beautiful boy. Oh, God. I missed him so much. I don't know if I said, but I missed him so much when we were in Chicago that I literally cried, like sobbed when we came back and I could give him a hug again. Like I literally sobbed. Didn't I? Sobbed all over your little fur. I'm so sorry. He's just my baby son. I just love him so much. Oh no, you've got lipstick all over your face. I'm sorry. <laughs> right, okay, I need to go finish the end of my reel. Let's go downstairs like a baby. Let's hold you like a baby so we can go downstairs together. <laughs> oh, I love a little evening in the house. I've just completely rearranged this entire bouquet that arrived from Arena Flowers, my subscription. It was just looking a little bit like it needed a prune, so I've pruned it up all nice and it's looking so pretty again now. Everywhere is so nice and neat and tidy. I still, I still need to fill this with pine cones, not acorns, pine cones. In three separate vlogs, I've called pine cones acorns and everyone's always like, you, do you mean pine cones? I do mean pine cones. I need to fill this with pine cones. I think it will look a little better than this half. Um, and also just throw some chupa chups in there. That needs sorting out. Have a look how adorable this is. The little one has started just sitting in here on this cushion because it's hot underneath this floor. And I think he likes it because it means that if, it, if we're in different parts of the house, then he's kind of in the middle. Oh, I just love, just love, 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 love this room so much. It is so wonderful and festive. This is a real truth moment. This room is absolutely ridiculous. Just ridiculous. It <laughs> is just filled with like coats that I no longer need and I need to put my vestiaire. I've got bouquets in here that need a home, both bed. I've got these two chairs that I need to sell because we no longer need them. There's suitcases, suitcases, suitcases. So yeah, this room has just become like the dumping ground for everything that we don't know what else to do with. We did have a big table in here, um, it's like an office space. Then we got rid of that and then we just had the table in here and I used it for a few of my um, how to in 10 videos over like lockdown when I was just trying to create some like educational content. But then we turned it into a studio and we had our backdrop set up and we bought stools and, and we had all lights and it was great as like a little studio but it, there's only so much that I want to shoot in a studio like I used to shoot in my closet or on the street somewhere. So 
This room I'm going to turn into a guest room because it's it's one of the brightest rooms in the house which is currently being blocked by this massive piece of linen and my idea really with the space is that I'm going to put a big sofa bed here so it'll be a big sofa that turns into a bed. I mean let me know let me know what you think of this idea but I thought that that would then mean that if we ever do want to still keep a few things in this room we wouldn't have an enormous bed con to contend with. We just have a lovely sofa. Any of us can come and sit up here and chill and read or take ourselves out to do some laptop work up here if we ever want to. And so we then would have a sofa, but if we had guests over, we can turn it into like a big bed. I thought that would be quite a good idea. Then for this corner, I was thinking big armchair. I've seen a really gorgeous one on sofa.com that's like beautiful boucle fabric and then wooden legs. Um, so I've got my eye on that one. And a sofa bed from sofa.com as well. So we'd have sofa bed, we'd have a chair. I'd likely keep this cabinet that's just in its corner, but just kind of put more books on it and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, maybe a little side table in here with a bouquet on it. And then the floor. The floor is currently the, the actual floorboards that we painted, we had them painted white and it was fine but it did get, you know, things like this happen. Again I've seen a really fantastic flooring company that do rugs and they make them to the size that you want. I'll put the name of the brand here, they make them to a certain length, I think they can do up to four metres wide and they do as long as you like. So I was thinking I would just get an enormous rug that would almost fill this entire floor so then we've kind of got a bit of best of both worlds in here. Yeah, let me know what you think about it. I also thought, again, if we also have a sofa bed and just a chair in here and a big rug, then technically we would still have all this space technically here. So if we did ever need to shoot, then we've got a good enough, large enough space that we can stick that back up, stick me in front of it, and we've got like a little studio backdrop. So I thought it's best of both worlds, whereas a bed would mean we can't use this room ever at all for studio. So let me know, those are kind of the thought processes right now. Likely I would leave the room painted white, like it is now. It's currently in all white, but by Far and Ball, which is the brightest they do. And uh, I quite like it like this. Alex has some really fantastic like large rugs. We could maybe hang some of those up on the walls, like bring colour in that way and a bit more excitement. And then just use flowers to add a little bit more colour. That's the idea. Anyway, back downstairs, dog is still. Sound asleep, bless him. Oh, little tail's going, little tail's going. I think today may be the day to put up the tree in the hallway. So I'm gonna do that. Santa. Yeah, sorry guys, I, what is this on my top? My camera died as we were doing that because obviously that took so long, it took like an hour. So um, yes, yeah, so we kind of did the baubles off camera, but she is complete. So I have, again, I've got my picks, these beautiful glittery picks and also these long kind of leaves with the beautiful little crystals all over them. And then this gorgeous ribbon that wraps all the way down. Um, and again, they're all from Balsam Hill and the tree is one of their kind of cathedral trees from Balsam Hill. So it's super tall. I think this one is, I want to say eight, maybe nine foot, maybe, maybe it was eight foot. But it's great because it's really skinny. So it's one of their skinny cathedral trees. So it'll fit really perfectly, but go up super high. And then we've got the incredible star on the top. Again, that's Balsam Hill. And a lot of the baubles are. Actually, again, I went a bit crazy. If you remember, I went a little bit crazy last year on all the Balsam Hill things for both trees. And then amidst here, we have a couple of beautiful little pieces that we've collected over the years. Like this is a little Swarovski snowflake. And this is a gorgeous gift that we got from a brand called Studio Bremer. Um, I'll leave it linked down below, but they've painted this beautiful bow bauble for us. So we're gonna keep that safe and special forever. These are all beautiful Balsam Hill ones. I just really love these gorgeous ornate over the top baubles. This is one though that I've had 
for years, this little guy. And then things like this gorgeous star. I love a lot, I love the glass, like beautiful glass pieces, like this one as well. I've had this one for years. It's the only thing that I've allowed that has blue on it. <laughs> Everything else is champagnes, golds. Gorgeous little one. Oh, I can't remember now where this is from. But someone made this for us, and again, it's so beautiful. It's a little Fabergé egg. Again, that's just one we found, now it's bought for me. So, it's a nice little mixture. But then we turn off the lights, and you just got, well, you just got this light on up here. And then you've got this. It is just so pretty. <laughs> here we've got the garland with the little yellow berries on it and the lights. This again is a little candle hole that we've had for years, just throwing a stocking on there. And then we've put a garland up this, put a garland all the way up this big thing here. And then again a garland just up there. So it just feels really lovely and Christmassy now. As soon as you walk in the door, if, if we have any guests over, also we'll have the fire on, I'll have all the candles lit, and it'll just feel really really beautiful as soon as you look up so i am so happy that was pulling santa to bits okay that is done for the day fabulous i just thought if i didn't get that done i would not get it done and it's already the 2nd of december i'm going to run out of time otherwise this tree is absolutely slanting over this way <laughs> you can really see it is slanting towards us with the weight <laughs> We have friends coming over at the weekend and so, um, in fact, we're going to a party at the weekend. We're going to Jade Holland Cooper's party um, over at her beautiful mansion in Cheltenham, um, Country Manor, I should say. And then, um, yeah, we have friends coming over Sunday. So I wanted the house to look really festive and Christmassy for those guys coming over. So I am super happy with it now. So the only thing now left on my agenda Hopefully you can see me by the way. The only thing now left on my agenda is to work out. I've not been on the Peloton since we got back and it's been a couple of days. I did like four workouts when I was in Chicago to try and keep it up. I just need to find my mojo, I think. Get on it. 